So Georgie, today we're going to do the hearing test, and you've done this before. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the headphones on your ears and you're going to hear some beeps. And I'm going to give you a button. I want you to press down on the button for me every time you hear a beep, even if it's really quiet. Before we do the test, I need to have a quick look in your ears with my light. Is that okay? Brilliant. So hold on to the button. I'm just going to pop these headphones on. Is that comfortable? Okay. So I'm just going to start testing now, Georgie, okay? Okay, Georgie, the next one's going to be a different noise. This one's going to be a squeaky sound. The Pure Tone Audiometry Test is designed to find the hearing thresholds a person has. So with Georgie, we put the headphones on and I presented sounds, pure tone sounds in each ear at different frequencies and she responded by pressing a button which allowed me to find the quieter sounds that she could hear at each frequency. My first one I can remember when I was about two or three and I didn't have to press the button. When I heard a beep, I would stack blocks on top of one another. But now I press the button when there's a beep. Younger children would do what we call conditioned play audiometry and they would put a toy in a bucket or build stackers like Georgie was saying when they heard the beep instead. With pure tone audiometry there are two parts, air conduction testing with the headphones and bone conduction testing where a band, a headband with a box transmitter is placed on the mastoid bone behind the ear. And the bone conduction testing is not done on everyone, it's only if there is a discrepancy with the air conduction thresholds or if they're not within normal limits. And the reason to do that is to make sure there's no conductive component to the hearing loss or if it is a, a, a a permanent sensory neural hearing loss. The next test is called the tympanometry test, Georgie. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little tip in your ear and you're going to feel a puff of air going through and this machine is going to tell me how well your middle ear is working. You don't need to do anything for this test but I need you to sit nice and still for me and if you could look forward that would be great. Lovely. Now I'm just going to do the same on the other side. All done. So the next test after the pure tone audiometry will be the tympanometry test, which tells us about the middle ear function. It's a great test to use in conjunction with the hearing test results we've obtained because it will tell us if there's any conductive overlay on the hearing results that we've got. In children, it's quite common to have um, a condition called glue ear, which often means that their air conduction results will be worse than the bone conduction results because the fluid behind the eardrum is preventing the sound going through to the inner ear. After the testing, we would discuss the results with the parents, so we would explain the hearing test results, explain where the thresholds fall, what would be considered normal hearing, and if there is a hearing loss, we'd explain where it falls within what we call the speech banana, um, which identifies different sounds and phonemes um, within the speech range. If required, the child would come back for further testing, and additionally, if there is a need for hearing aid provision, the audiology team would provide that. Um, don't worry, it doesn't hurt. Uh, it's never hurt me. I've always had fun. I've always liked finding new ways of being able to hear. And I've like, always liked understanding it, being told what's happening, not to be in the blue. Like, So whenever I get a hearing test, I like to know how it's gone, how we can do different things and being able to do everything else anyone else can do. I play hockey, netball, water polo, cricket, football, swimming, rounders, um, uh, pretty much most of the sports, basketball, uh, 
the only sport I don't like is running. 